every reason to avoid them. I'm looking for my keys! Plant me, plant me! The leaves are going to rake themselves! Nationwide is different. Did you call Nationwide to check on our claim? We put members first. Actually, they call me. Nationwide is on your side. obsession with trying to prove or disprove the legend of Sina Blanca happened when we were in the Highlands on this trip. And I remember walking along this ridge and there was this beautiful mountain stream, this very idyllic looking place, deep jungle, babbling stream, and there's this huge boulder. And in this boulder was this wonderful carving of a man with some kind of a fancy headdress. And he had a stick, and it looked like he had a bag with seeds or something over his shoulder, and seeds were falling out of it. And that was the moment that clicked in my head that went, there's more to this story than meets the eye. But stumbling across a few ancient artifacts isn't the same as finding a city. And after weeks spent wandering through the heavy underground, Elkin begins to have second thoughts. Walking aimlessly into the jungle, to me, is a fool's errand. Many times, you're lucky if you do a mile or two a day because you run into sands of bamboo, or the terrain is tough. It's really tough, slow going. But also, you can't see much. When you're looking at all this vegetation, you're lucky if you can see 10 meters in front of you. You can be in front of a pyramid and you just go up. Just another hill I gotta walk up. And you have no idea because it's covered in vegetation, trees, and mud. Finally, time and money run out. Everyone is exhausted. Elkins has to admit this mission to find the White City has failed. But he's already dreaming about the next one. I kept thinking, well, one day, maybe I'm going to figure out a way to try and find this lost city if, in fact, it exists. Steve tells himself that someday, He'll return to finish the job. You know, once you with that virus, it comes back roaring and you can't, you can't stop. A half century earlier, adventurer Theodore Mord and his friends were wandering through the same jungle with the same obsession. And the same lack of results. And days turned into weeks. They got tired, they got hungry. They got beaten up just by being out in the jungle for a long time. They do find a few artifacts of unknown origin here and there, but no lost city. The details are unclear. Moore clearly travels well into the interior of in Honduras, and he actually finds archaeological sites from which he makes collections. In fact, those objects are now in the Smithsonian collections. At some point, 
the hopelessness of their situation begins to dawn on them. We are cut and bruised and tired and hungry. There are moments of wrath, despair, and disgust all at once. An inexorable lassitude that sucks out of their guts. After weeks out there, reality tends to blur. It's like you're living in this sort of fever dream. Then, a change. Either on the ground or in Mord's mind. Whichever it was, months after entering the jungle, Mord emerges with a story that will make him famous. He's found Ciudad Blanca, and it's even stranger than anyone could have imagined. So Mord comes back and he has this great press conference in New York City. Everybody's there. New York Times is there. All the great newspapers are there to hear the stories of the lost white city. And he tells a great story. The people are totally enamored by this guy. The one where the question is, well, where is it? Of course, Moore doesn't tell us. Moore's discovery comes at a time when the public is flocking to movies about jungles and the strange creatures who live there. So it's no surprise that when Mord writes an article about finding the White City, 